and welcome to STEAM, the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Today, we are going to speak with Lee Summer and Stephen Edgen at the College Park Airport to explore some of the STEAM elements of flying. Then, we'll visit the College Park Aviation Museum and talk to Kevin Cabrera and Daniel Graham about the history of flight. And then finally, we'll meet with some friends to put together our very own flying machines. Let's get started. Hey, I'm Lee Summer. I'm the airport manager. You're here for a good reason because this is the oldest continuously operated airport in the world. It's an amazing place. There's people here who come from all over the world just to come to this airport to see what it's all about. Steaming, there's scientific stuff all about flying. I mean, you have just the studying of weather and the science behind that and the science behind the aerodynamics of the aircraft as in the, the four forces of flight, which is lift, thrust, weight, and drag. You have mathematics, which is just weight and balance of the aircraft, how much fuel you need to get so far. These technologies, there's always brand new technology coming out for aviation. So the College Park Airport is located very close to DC, which means we are in what's called the flight restricted zone, which is this red circle around DC. To fly in and out of here, you have to be background checked and vetted to fly in and out, and you get a special code, and that's what you give whenever you file a flight plan. When a pilot flies in here, they call us on the radio, and we give them the weather and which way the winds are going, and that way they know which runway to land on so they can land safely. There's also, there's when it comes to art for aviation, it's more a sense of aerobatic flying. It gives it a, a sense of art form, but that compiles everything about STEAM into aviation in aerobatics. Welcome, uh, my name is Kevin Cabrera. I'm the museum director here at the College Park Aviation Museum. We're welcoming some of our guests during our temporary shutdown. We're practicing some social distancing, but we're gonna be connecting STEAM and aviation here, and we're gonna get you a brief tour of this uh, beautiful museum. We hope that you can come visit us once everything is back to normal. Uh, I'm Dr. Dan Graham. I'm the education manager here at the College Park Aviation Museum, and I will also be your tour guide today. So, um, right off the bat, why is there a museum here at all in the first place? Well, it mostly has to do with these two fellows, Wilbur and Orville Wright, the Wright brothers. You may have heard of them. They came here in 1909 to set up an airport and an army aviation school. So obviously they tested their airplane in North Carolina at Kitty Hawk, but after they discovered that that airplane actually worked, they then wanted to sell it. One of their main customers was the United States government. But the US government said, hey, it's pretty cool to have an airplane, but that's not much use if we don't also have pilots. You need a pilot for your plane. So the Wright brothers said, okay, yeah, let's find a place where we can teach soldiers how to fly. And they came right here to do that. As we move through the museum, uh, we're gonna go around this corner here and we're actually going to see the Wright brothers' second aircraft design, which is called the Wright Model B. The Model B is the airplane that they built and tested and designed right here in Olive Park. Now, before the Wright brothers started building airplanes, they were first building bicycles. So if we look at this aircraft, we can actually see quite a few pieces that look like bicycle parts. If you bring your attention to the rear of the airplane, you can see what looks like a bicycle chain and a bicycle gear or sprocket. That's exactly what it is. Those are bike parts. And all of these wires that are holding tension between different parts of the airplane that help help the airplane to stay stable when it's in the air are also from a bicycle. Those are the, the wires the, that you would see in the spokes of a bicycle wheel. I like a lot of things about this airplane. I think this airplane is super cool. But a few of my favorites that I will point out to you. What material do you think this is made out of? It looks like metal. And that's on purpose. The Wright brothers want you to think it's metal, but it's actually made out of wood. When they were building their aircraft in 1909, metal was far too heavy to fly. Nowadays, we have very lightweight metals. You can build something out of aluminum or titanium that could fly, but back then you couldn't. So the Wright brothers paint this to look like metal, trying to steal their ideas 
take their designs for yourself, you're gonna build your plane out of metal and it'll be too heavy to fly. My next favorite thing about this aircraft is the way that you fly it. We have three sticks in the center of the aircraft that control this plane. The center stick controls two things at the back of the airplane. When I turn this top portion of the stick, you can see something moving at the rear of the plane. That is called the rudder. The rudder helps the airplane to turn. If I move this center stick forward or backwards, oh, get ahead of myself. If I move this stick forward or backwards, you see another element moving at the rear of the plane. That is the elevator. What does an elevator do in a building? Takes you up one floor or down one floor. The elevator on our airplane does the same thing. You can go up, you can go down. But when you're turning, the tail isn't enough to turn the plane. When the Wright brothers were designing this airplane, they looked at birds and they saw how birds turn. When a bird needs to turn, it doesn't stop in midair and then sort of hop around and then keep flying. It uses its wings, it twists them and it bends them to move through the air. The Wright brothers said, we can build an airplane that does that too. Just like birds turn in the air by moving their wings in that motion, the Wright Brothers airplane also turns in the air by doing exactly that, which is called wing warping. Wing warping. By modern standards, this is not a very safe plane. Uh, and there are a lot of things about it that can be improved on. And in just five short years, a lot of those things were improved on. So this is our Curtis Jenny. And in this Curtis Jenny, like uh, Dan mentioned, came five years later. Just like you've all probably heard of the Wright brothers, you've all probably heard of the US Postal Service, right? The Air Service actually started out of College Park in 1918. This airplane looks a lot different than the Wright brothers' airplane, but it's actually very similar in a lot of ways. It's still made out of the same material. But this canvas has been painted to make it waterproof, unlike the Wright Brothers plane. It still has two seats, but this time those seats are in a row rather than side by side. And although they're still exposed to the outside, uh, they're a little more enclosed within the body of the airplane, which makes it a little bit safer. Uh, this is what we would call an open cockpit airplane. The Brothers to the Curtis Jenny, just five years of difference, but a lot of differences in design, a lot of advances that have been made in the engineering of aviation. Sometimes engineering innovations are not successful though. This next aircraft is a perfect example of that. This is not an airplane. This is one of the very first helicopters. A father and son team, Henry and Emile Berliner, uh, decided that they would work to build that. And this is the design that they came up with. This aircraft could go 40 miles per hour in five directions. It could go up, it could go forward and backward and left and right, but it could not go down. In order to land the Berliner helicopter, you had to turn it off and fall. It could only go about 15 feet high, so it wasn't the farthest fall but it was far enough that when the Navy saw this tested at the College Park Airfield, they said, that seems very dangerous, no thank you. We're not really interested. So this is actually the only Berliner helicopter that was ever made. But this is an example of an unsuccessful attempt to innovate and engineer. After that experience, Henry said, that was very scary and very dangerous, and I'm not interested in working with helicopters anymore. But what I am going to do is build the world's safest airplane, which is how we got the Air Coop. The Air Coop factory was set up just down the road from the College Park Aviation Museum in Riverdale, Maryland. Uh, and Henry made it his life's mission to build an airplane that was spin-proof, stall-proof, and as easy to fly as a car is to drive. Uh, he did that by engineering a whole series of new systems that made the controls of an airplane easier to use, safer to use, and much more similar to how you would drive a car, which more people were already familiar with. The air coupes were built throughout the uh, 1950s, starting in the late 1940s, but throughout the 1950s. And uh, you actually used to be able to buy these airplanes out of uh, department store catalogs. 
you could go into a Macy's showroom and see an air coupon display there and order one for yourself that would be delivered to your home and you could assemble it uh, at the College Park Aviation Museum. Beyond talking about the history of engineering and innovation and aviation, we also offer a lot of interactive programs uh, for youth of all ages and, and in some instances adults to come and work through engineering challenges. Wow, that was amazing. It sure was. The integration of all of these subjects helps to ensure the success of flight. Now I can build an airplane. You sure can. With the power of steam, you can achieve almost anything. Now let's try out our steam abilities and build our own flying machine. Step one, combine two popsicle sticks and attach tape to the middle. Step two, attach propeller to end of popsicle sticks. Step three, bend paper clip to a 90 degree angle and attach to the opposite end of the popsicle stick. Step four, attach rubber band into the hook of the propeller and the opposite end of the hook of the paper clip. Step five, cut out the shape of your paper flying machine and attach to the middle of the popsicle sticks. Wind up the propeller until the rubber band begins to coil on itself. Release in a tick-tock motion, propeller first. Looking for ways to further test your steam skills? Change the variables on your flying machine, such as the number of times you wind it up or the shape of the paper attached. The possibilities are endless. If you enjoyed this activity, please be sure to check out our website, pgextremeteens.com, for more information on steam. And don't forget to upload your pictures and videos on social media using the hashtag PGParkSteam. Thanks for visiting with us today. We hope you had fun. Until next time, stay healthy, be safe, and keep steaming on. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in again and visit the online resource center at PGParks.com, your one-stop shop for fun and fitness at home. This is the place to live more, play more, indoors.